When we first talked about linear and quadratic regressions, when we dealt with, with tables that had years in them, we said that we never plug in the year. Like, you don't plug in 1955, which you see at the bottom of the screen, in L1. Because a lot of times what can happen is it can create something called a data overload error in the calculator. So instead, we determine a year as a starting point. And most of the time, we're going to tell you that starting point. And I'm actually going to tell you a starting point here. It's the same one that the book uses. In problem two, it says the table shows how much milk Wisconsin dairy farms produced in 1955, 1980, and 2005. What linear model best fits the data? Use the model to estimate milk production in 2000. So now that I scroll down a little here, in 1955, there were 16.5 billion pounds of milk produced. In 1980, it was 22.4 billion pounds. And in 2005, it was 22.9 billion pounds. We're going to let X be the number of years since 1900, because that's what the book uses. Now, sometimes we give you a starting year, and sometimes you just use whatever the first year is. I'll try to remember to give you a starting year so that everybody gets a consistent answer. If X is the number of years since 1900, then this will be 55, this will be 80, and this will be 105, and that's what we'll put in list one. And in list two, we'll put the number of billions of pounds. Please remember that phrase, in billions of pounds, because when you get your final answer, when you estimate the milk production, excuse me, in 2000, you need to remember that your answer is in billions of pounds and not just whatever the answer is, pounds. So, like before, go plug this into the calculator. After you plug the data into the calculator, because it asks us for a linear model, we're going to do a linear regression equation. So you go to stat edit number four. Remember, if you're dealing with the old operating system, when lin reg pops up on the top of your screen, you want to put y1 next to it so that it saves the equation in the graphing function. You get to y1 by pressing bars, an arrow to y bars, number one function, number one y1, and then hit enter so your um, equation pops up on the screen. And if you press y equals, the equation should be there. And then if you go to zoom, Zoom stat, as long as your stat plot is on, you should see this. These are your three ordered pairs graphed. And then the linear line would be the line of best fit. Now you're looking at it, I hope, saying to yourself, well, it doesn't hit any of those points. So is it really the best interpretation of this graph? And the answer is probably not. Okay, so now let's go to the fact that we got the equation y is equal to 0.128x plus 10.36. Because now we want to determine about how much milk was produced in the year 2000. You do not plug in 2000 for x. You're going to plug in 100. Because remember that x was the number of years since 1900. So when you plug 100 in place of x and you hit enter, you end up getting the answer is approximately 23.2. And remember, that's billion pounds. Because for a problem like this, units matter. Otherwise, somebody might think you're saying it's 23.2 pounds. Well, I'm sure they made more milk than that. I can go buy 23.2 pounds of milk at the grocery store. Just because an equation best fits the data of a model doesn't necessarily mean it's the best representation of a model. 
This is where you need to use your common sense and reasoning skills. So in problem three, we're going to use the same table from problem two, but now we're going to use the n plus one point principle, which said that since we have three ordered pairs, that a degree two polynomial would be the best model. That means a quadratic model. Well, let's actually find the quadratic model and compare it to the linear model and see which one is more likely to represent milk production over time. So we just looked at the linear model. Well, I should go back into the page. Here's where the linear model was. Now let's go and do the quadratic model. We already have the data in our calculator. So now we're going to go to our stat calc number, um, number five. Remember, if you have the old operating system, when quad reg shows up on the screen, you need to go put Y1 next to it. If you have the new operating system, Y1 goes next to store, R-E-G-E-Q, the score door regression equation. And then when you get your equation, then go to graph and see what happens. And this is what you should get. Well, that's pretty nice. I mean, it hits all my points, doesn't it? But now here's the next question. Which model seems more likely to represent milk production over time? So let's look at this graph. This graph is saying that the milk production is going up, and then what starts to happen over here? Well, this one says it's going to go down, doesn't it? Well, do you think milk production is going to go down and eventually cease to exist? Or, if I come back over here, do you think that milk production will just continue to increase over time? Use your reasoning skills. My reasoning skills say that, well, milk production is going to increase over time because there are more people on the planet. They can have more cows. They need to make more milk to accommodate all the people. So in this particular circumstance, even though the linear model doesn't best fit the data, doesn't it best represent the data? That's how I think about the problem. So when you're deciding if a certain model is reliable or not, you kind of have to consider the circumstances of the problem. Is this a problem where you want your model to fit the data? Or is this a problem where you just kind of have to reason what should happen over time? So be careful when you're making a decision on real world problems. This may be math class, but there's not necessarily one right answer to the question. So when we have these models, there are two types of information we often are looking for. Sometimes we want to do something called extrapolation. Extrapolation is when you're using a model to predict a Y value that's outside of the domain of a data set. Remember, domain are your inputs. So if you're trying to find a value that doesn't lie within your X values, we call it extrapolation. Interpolation is using a model to predict a Y value that is within the domain of a data set. Using a model to predict a Y value outside the domain of the data set is not as reliable as when you're doing interpolation extrapolation becomes less reliable as you move further away from the x values of the data. So interpolation is always more reliable, but that doesn't mean you don't want to do it. Some you know, businesses do this all the time. They try to make a prediction for what's going to happen in the future, even though they don't have data for the future. So Extrapolation may be important, it's just less reliable because there are outside factors that can change what happens over time. So in problem four, the table shows the average annual consumption of cheese per person in the U.S. for selected years from 1910 to 2001. So the years are 1910, 1940, 1970, 1975, 1995, and 2001. 
and the second column is the number of pounds consumed per person approximately. Now we can't use the n plus 1 principle here, so we're going to tell you to model this data with a cubic regression and graph the equation with the scatter plot so we can see if it best represents the data or not. All right, so you're going to put in for the years. Um, here's where watching the video is better than reading the book. They don't tell you in the book how they're putting the data into the equation. And so it took me a while to figure out that they made x the number of years since 1900. So when you go put this in your calculator, your input is actually going to be 10, 40, 70, 75, 95, and 101. So you go put this into list 1 and this into list 2. Once you've done that, then you'll go and do the cubic regression, which was under stat calc number 6. Make sure that your stat plot is on. When you go do your cubic regression, remember if you have the new operating system, under store regression equation, make sure it says Y1 afterwards. If you have the old operating system, once you call up cubic regression, make sure to call up Y1 before you hit enter. And then when you graph it, you need to go to zoom stat so that it gives you a nice graph. So when you get your equation, I want to talk about this for a second. Remember that this is something called scientific notation. It's the same thing as saying 9.242151 times 10 to the negative fifth. To turn that back into what's called standard format, you're going to move this decimal one, two, three, four, five spaces to the left. And in all those little humps, you're going to put zeros. So it's really 0 0.00009242151. None of the other numbers came up as scientific notation. You should get a graph that looks like this. This is what your scatter plot and the regression equation look like. And it fits pretty well. So the cubic model may actually be the best representation for this data. Now let's use our model to estimate the U.S. cheese consumption for 1980, 2000, and 2012. In which estimate do you have the most confidence? Which one has the least confidence? So this is the equation we got, but I want you to notice that this is actually rounded from the cubic regression you got on your calculator screen. Remember that we saved this equation in Y1 on your calculator. So we're going to actually use that to help us plug the numbers into our equation to get our new outputs. And that way we don't have to type in a whole bunch of numbers and accidentally type in the wrong number. All right, since we're doing an estimate for 1980, 2000, and 2012, that means we're going to use X is 80, X is 100, and X is 112. So now that it's saved in our calculator, we can do this neat little trick where we call up Y1 and tell the calculator to plug 80 in place of X. You do that by going to VARS, Y VARS, number one function, number one Y1. So now on your home screen, it should say Y1, and then just put parentheses 80 and hit enter. You'll do the same thing for 100 and for 112. And this is what pops up. So it actually does the work for us, which is really cool. All right, so in 1980, our model estimates that the per, um, each person consumes about 12.63 pounds of cheese per year. In 2000, our model estimates that it's about 
per year. And in 2012, they think that it's 46.21 pounds of cheese per year. Now remember, these two values are called interpolation because 1980 and 2000 are within the domain of our table. And this one is called extrapolation because it's outside the domain of our current data. Remember that interpolation is always more reliable than extrapolation. It doesn't mean extrapolation is bad. It just means that it's more reliable. So you should have more confidence in the values we got for 1980 and 2000 than you should for 2012. As a matter of fact, I'd probably go with, we're probably not consuming 46.21 pounds of cheese per year, but I could be wrong because I don't have that data.